listening to WPGU 107.1, loud and local, and you are here with Drake Maxson of Shouting Match. This is a strange world. Maxson of Shouting Match. Now, Drake, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got started with music? Um, I got started in music at a pretty young age. I was in grade school. I was always listening to um, what my parents were listening to at the time, a lot of older rock, uh, a lot of alternative rock that was just coming out at the time. And uh, yeah, that's kind of what I grew up with. I kind of always wanted to be on the stage and be playing music. Thought it was really cool. So, when did you first pick up a guitar? Um, I picked up my first guitar. I started lessons in like sixth grade, and so I've pretty much been playing ever since. Uh, ever since then. Sweet. Yeah, you sound like it. That's for sure. Thank you. Um, what you said your parents listened to music, and that kind of inspired you. What mm -hmm. What were they listening to? The old school rock. Um, my dad listened to like a lot of a lot of old Green Day and. Uh, my mom was really into the killers. 
Um, and so I just kind of grew up around them, and then I found my own music based off of that. So it's really good. Nice. Yeah. Um, so what was that last song called that you just played? Uh, that was Strangers. Okay. Um, it's out on Bandcamp right now. Yeah. Okay. People can pick it up whenever they feel like it. And they search for they search for shouting match on Bandcamp, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Cool, cool. Mm-hmm. Um, um, based on that song, what kind of inspired you to write that song? What was your experiences that led to that? Uh, I had a really bad relationship uh, about a year ago. Um, that went on for like way too long, and so that song kind of came out of that, and uh, kind of all the feelings associated with that past. So, okay. Want to play another song? Sure. All right. Someday It's gonna take me far from here And someday I won't feel anything, no more fear A one-way ticket, a breathless train ride out No suitcase only the things that were inside now you're inside out If you're tuning in right now, this is WPG 107. You're listening to Loud and Local with Drake Maxson of Shouting Match. Now, Drake, what was that song called? Uh, that song was called Someday. Um, a lot of my stuff isn't out yet. It isn't recorded okay. yet. Um, so if, hopefully soon it will be. But. Yeah, hopefully. That sounds good. <laughs> now, we were talking a little bit before about your influences growing up and everything. Mm-hmm. What, what sound, because you have a very unique sound, but you... I also feel like there's some things that there's a little Green Day in there, and have you heard of the band Pavement? Uh, no. There's a little bit of that sound in there too, okay. which I really like that band, and it, they have a really unique sound too. Who do you listen to currently that kind of feeds your inspiration? Um, I listen to like a lot of like new school rock, a lot of uh, post rock, like uh, this band called Basement. Um, Joyce Manor, uh, Foxing's a really good band. Um, I listen to a lot of stuff. I listen to rap sometimes too. I try not to 
like get too bogged down into one type of music uh, for too long because it kind of gets boring to listen to, like to me at least. But uh, I try to I try to keep it varied. So your other stuff that you've released on Bandcamp or the stuff that you haven't released is it sticking to one type of genre or are you versatile and moving around? Um, this is my solo project, so it's pretty much just me and my guitar. Um, but I have I have a band called Prevalence, and we play a bunch of like punk rock and uh, indie stuff. So I kind of have like two separate outlets. Um, I feel like I'm not as well versed into playing or singing other genres yet, but um, that's if if I was, I totally would do it. You know, I'd be all over the place. Yeah. You want to go ahead and play another one for us? For sure. WPGU 107.1, loud and local if you're just tuning in. We're sitting here with Drake Maxson of Shouting Match, who's performing live in the studio. What was that song called, Drake? Uh, that one was called uh, Caved In. Caved In, nice. Mm -hmm. what, um, what inspired you to write that song? Um, I, uh, I liked this girl, and things just didn't work out the way I thought they would, um, so I was kind of bummed, but it was okay. It was... It's fine. <laughs> it's okay. Heartbreak happens. Yeah, it, I, you know, it does. It does. <laughs> That's life for you. Um, so your lyrics seem to be pretty deep, and you're noticeably a good guitar player. Thank you. Um, when did you start songwriting, or just writing in general? 
Uh, it was a few years after I started guitar. Um, it was it was probably in high school, like midway through high school. So I was about like sixteen, seventeen. Was there anything, one moment that sparked that, or was it just collectively? Um, no, it was kind of collective. I just kind of had that goal in mind, like, from the beginning, and so it just kind of slowly developed over time. Yeah, Yeah, your your lyrics seem pretty deep and beautiful, Thank if I could you. put it that way. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you mentioned earlier that you have a band that you also perform with called Prevalence. I do. Okay. And do you sing, play guitar on that band? Yes, I do as well. Nice. Yeah, it's me and uh, my drummer, Will, and my bassist, Paul. Okay. Do they ever collaborate with you on your solo project, Shouting Match? Um, no, not really. Uh, usually, I mean, they've heard it and they've, like, thrown in input, but um, we don't really collaborate on the songwriting process that much, not for my solo stuff. But. Okay. So you write everything on their solo stuff? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Pretty impressive. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to play something else for us? Um, let me see. Uh, yeah, sure. I'll play. Can I play like one more? Is that cool? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Okay. Sweet.
Now, what was that song called? Uh, that song's called Creep. Creep. <laughs> okay, there's a similar similar song with that name. I know, I know. It's it's. Uh, it wasn't purposeful. I wasn't really thinking of that of Radiohead when I wrote it, um, but I was definitely kind of thinking of the same vibe. So. Yeah. yeah. What was that song about? Um, I mean, it's about feeling like a creep. I mean, I I generally come I generally come off as kind of awkward to some people, and so. Uh, I'm usually pretty quiet and reserved, and so I feel like, I don't know, that's kind of like my perception of myself through other people's eyes, I guess, and it's just kind of about that, um, even though I don't really think of myself as a creep. Well, considering I just met you a few minutes ago, <laughs> I, and I don't think anyone in this room thought you were a creep. Thank you. I nor did we you. think you were awkward. <laughs> I, I try not to be. You're not, so that's all good. <laughs> on that front um so when you started writing your solo project how old were you um my first ep um that i recorded i recorded it with ryan groff um of the band elsinore at his studio um and that was the first thing i had like ever recorded ever put out um and that was sophomore year of high school okay yeah and so um, it was pretty early on, 16. So Okay, and how old are you now? I am 21. Yeah. So stepping aside from the music for a little bit, mm -hmm. um, you live in the area, in the Champaign area? Yeah, I live in Urbana. Okay, do you, do you go to school around here or anything? I go to Parkland. You go to Parkland? Okay. Yeah. Do you, what do you do at Parkland? Um, I'm a music major. I major in music foundations uh, with a focus in um, production and okay. recording. Uh, I also intern at Parkland's record label, uh, Perimeter Road Sound Recordings. Um, we're always doing a bunch of different stuff, like recording bands from the community and um, releasing albums with them. And also uh, we're putting together a music festival this year in may so okay do you have the specific date in may or just yeah uh may 4th um at one o'clock um we're gonna have a bunch of uh really good bands like elsinore like uh my band will be playing uh this band called zorilla um uh, a local band called a local punk band called nectar uh the data waves um a, a mix of a bunch of different stuff so it should be really cool Okay, we want to say the date one more time so our listeners can hear and show uh, up. It's uh, May 4th at uh, 1 p.m., and it's one. completely free. At Parkland. At Parkland. Completely free, everybody. Yep. Completely free. There'll be food trucks and uh, a bunch of music going on. So, The food will not be free, but... Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned recording with Elsinore when you were mm -hmm. 16. Yeah, I've known I've known Ryan for I knew Ryan for a couple of years before that even, and so I was taking uh, lessons from him. So yeah. okay, are you pretty active in the Champagne Urbana music scene? Uh, I mean, I like to think of myself as pretty active. I try to go to shows um, every so often. I play a lot of shows with my band. We play a lot of house shows. Um, but yeah, I'd like to think so. Are there any upcoming shows that you want to plug or any people you want to give a shout out to that we can listen to in the near future or go see you wherever you are in the area? Um, the Yeah, I have two things. Um, I went to a show, a house show last night, actually, and uh, I saw the XOKs, um, and they're really fantastic. They're a really good band. Uh, it was great to see them live. Um, I also am playing a show at the Craner Art Museum uh, this Friday. It's on the 8th. I think that's Friday. Um, and it's another free show. There's going to be a bunch of local musicians uh, kind of uh, actually playing like sets in the art museum which with a bunch of like gallery pieces and stuff. So it's going to be really cool. Sweet. Did you ever think that you'd be playing at Craner or... Uh, no, not really. It came as a, as a surprise. I know uh, Camila... Um, Glowacki, I think that's how you say her last name. Uh, kind of puts it all together. Um, so I knew her from around the around town, and so she asked me to play it. And yeah, I'm pretty psyched for it. Sweet. Have you played at any other places around here? 
Uh, yeah, I've played at uh, Canopy Club. I've played at um, uh, Blips and Chits. It's a house venue. Um, I've played at uh, the IMC multiple times. I've played at Exile on Main. Um, wow, so you've been around the block. I've been around. <laughs> That's sweet. And people could see you at Craner uh, Friday. Yep. This what time? Uh, at seven. Seven o'clock, everybody. Are you? Do you know about what time you'll be going on? Or um, there's a few acts before me, but we each only have about twenty minutes. So um, okay, it's pretty short lived. So yeah, sweet. That's cool. Um, do you do you have any dream collaborations with? anybody around the area other than obviously being or working closely with Elsinore when you were 16? Um, uh, there's certainly people that I have collaborated with before and that I still like to. Um, I don't know about any like dream collaborations, quote unquote, but um, I... I love uh, the Telephone Junkies. I'm really close friends with those guys. Uh, and uh, we played a show at their house a while back. But I love them. I love playing music with them. They're awesome. Shout out to, to Jack and Matt. <laughs> if you keep seeing us looking up at the wall behind you, we have all the names of the people that have been on the show. I can see that. And um, we just don't want you to think we're <laughs> looking behind <laughs> you or anything. We, got, we had Elsinore in here. Awesome. Uh, Haunted by Humans was last week, and they also worked with Elsinore, I think it was recently on their last project too. Nice. So yeah, you are you gonna play anything else, or are we just gonna chill for a bit and uh, shoot this stuff? We can chill for a bit. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, whatever you want to do, man. Um, <clears throat> actually, really quick, we have a few ads to play, and then we'll be right back with Loud and Local. Hey everybody, you're listening to WPG 107.1. Loud and local. We are here with, um, sh- I totally forgot. Drake Maxson. Drake Maxson. Of sh- shouting, shouting match. match. There yeah, we go. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so, so many things going on. Um, so during the break, you were telling us about how you kind of have a hard time making time for um, your solo project. What else do you do in your free time other than making music, good uh, music at that? Uh, well, I usually sleep. Uh, during my free time, uh, just because I'm I'm I'm, ex- I'm wiped. Um, I went to work at like 10 a.m. today, and I just got off just in time to be here. So, thank um, you for being here. We yeah, appreciate th- it. Thank you for the having listeners me. appreciate some good live music. <laughs> I hope they do. Um, I yeah, I have two jobs. I go to school full time. I intern at a record label. I and then I try to do music on top of that. And I, I run a, a radio show actually too, uh, called the Basement Article that just goes over lots of uh, local DIY music scene news and shows. And so, um, yeah, all that just combined together is a ton of work, and I constantly feel exhausted. So usually, when I have free time, I sleep. That's good. <laughs> yeah. So, how could people listen to your radio show if they love hearing you here today? Yeah. Um, it's uh, every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on uh, WPCD 88.7. Um, yeah, I have a, a two-hour-long show. I usually bring on, I usually interview guests, um, and uh, usually they're somehow related to the music scene, or I have a band on this week, actually, um, called Moats. Uh, they're really good. Um, so, yeah. Sweet. <clears throat> so you were talking a little bit about um playing shows around here mm. do you have any hot takes about the champagne urbana music scene um it's interesting um i'm a townie so i've been here like all my life basically and so i've kind of grown up around it um i don't know if i really have any hot takes uh because most of it is it comes down to a matter of uh, experience in a matter of perception um but um i think it's doing well i think it's doing good um you know the the scene like comes and goes in waves um it used to be really big like in the 80s and 90s um and it's kind of dipped since then but there's been a huge rise of just like local diy shows both 
on campus and elsewhere. Um, so it's kind of interesting to see that and kind of interesting to see musicians and people uh, working in that field, like to kind of retake it and kind of build their own way of doing it, you know? Yeah, and would you say that you're one of the people to help kind of be rebuilding this champagne scene? Uh, hopefully, that's kind of the goal. I, I would love to. Um, <laughs> we'll, I, we'll see in time. Time will tell. <laughs> yeah, and uh, hopefully enough people show up at Craner this Friday at 7. 7. This Friday at 7 to see you, Drake Maxson of Shouting Match. Yep. Nailed it. <laughs> um, to play. <laughs> So, you said you've been playing guitar since you were in sixth grade. Yeah. Do you play any other instruments or have tried and horribly failed? Uh, yes. Uh, I played bass in a band before. Um, that's not too much different from a guitar, but um, I tried playing piano for a little bit. I was absolutely horrible at it, um, but I played recorder in grade school. Fantastic instrument. You know. It's essential. It is essential to <laughs> all types of music. And as a guitar player, or a, I'm a very juvenile guitar player who's <laughs> learning right now, I could say that I'm envious of your talent mm -hmm. and your ability to make pretty, pretty darn good music. Well, everyone, everyone starts somewhere. I didn't sound that great when I first started either. So that's good. Yeah, I don't, I don't sound great. It's all, <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> so your. Uh, you said that you're playing this Friday. Is that your, your band prevalence? No, that's a solo set. Oh, this I is have... your solo set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you said you're super busy with school, the job, the internship, the radio show. Mm -hmm. um, are you right now mostly focused on your solo stuff or the band prevalence? Um, I usually focus on prevalence a little bit more. I like, uh, I like the varying degrees of energy that comes with like a full band. Um, I find it really interesting and really fun to play with them. So That's a good thing to say, and I'm sure they'd be very happy to hear that. Are they listening right now? Uh, hopefully. I let them know. Maybe they are. Uh, my bassist lives in, uh, lives in Pesodum, um, and then Will lives here. But uh, hopefully. Hey, guys, if you are listening, <laughs> hi. <laughs> Give them a shout-out. <laughs> um, how, how did you meet your bandmates? Well, I met Will, my drummer, a long time ago. I met him uh, when I was, like, 15. Um, we were in, like, a metal band together. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was kind of interesting. But that current, like, lineup of that that band kind of dissolved because we were all kind of growing up and kind of changing, um, and we wanted to play different music. And so once me and him left... I asked him, hey, do you want to, like, start something new? And he was, like, totally down for it. Um, we went through a couple iterations of members, um, but finally settled on Paul because we had we had known him for a long time. I had known him from just being a townie in Urbana. He used to work at a coffee shop in, uh, in downtown Urbana. So, yeah, I've known the guys for a long time now, actually. And uh, do you and Prevalence have anything coming up plan any shows um we have one on the 18th at the imc um it starts at 8 p.m i believe uh that might be wrong but it's okay people can <laughs> show up when <whenever laughs> just have a good time absolutely so um have you had any other bandmates in prevalence or or is it just you and uh will and paul it's just us right now um we love to add more members like another guitarist or a keyboard player or something but we'll see S do you usually stick to like rhythm or do you like to be lead guitar if you were playing in a large band in a large band i would usually stick with rhythm okay. um i really like playing chords and uh just determining the pacing of a song i feel like it's really fun like how you can mess with that and make it more interesting so yeah your chords i i don't know i i really like the vibe that you give off when you thank play you. it's a cool different unique kind of sound and i like it thank you and i'm sure the listeners of wpgu think the same as well um you said when you were younger just to kind of reiterate your
parents got you started on music at a young age, listening to kind of like the old Rocky kind of stuff, like uh, Green Day. And would you like to reiterate who you kind of listen to now or who influences you to write or play? Yeah, I listen to a lot of uh, Joyce Manor. I listen to this band called Mom Jeans. They're really good. I've heard of them. <laughs> uh, I listen to this band called Remo Drive. I listen to a lot of like new school emo stuff. Um, I really like American football. They're great. Um, all that kind of stuff. Cool. And um, so you're playing this Friday, um, the 8th. Your band prevalence is playing the 18th, the 18th. at 8, maybe, at yeah. the IMC. At the AMC. Possibly. Yes. Who knows? Uh, or around then. <laughs> yeah, or around the area. You can, you can check us out on... Uh, if you just look at prevalence on Facebook or on Instagram, we keep pretty up to date on show announcements and stuff like that. So, and if people want to check out your solo stuff after listening to this, they could go to Bandcamp and what would they search? Would they search Shouting Match? Yes, there was cool. sh- Shouting Match, and that's free of charge, correct? Yeah, it's free. Yeah, I listened today to all your stuff on Shouting Match on Bandcamp, completely free. Everybody, mm-hmm. you don't have to pay a dime. Mm-mm. <laughs> Is there anything you want to bring up or kind of discuss that you were coming in here wanting to talk about? Um, I think you've covered everything. I think we've covered a lot. That was good. We have covered a lot. We've gone into the the deepness of your songs and how heartbreak <laughs> is good in the way that it can create beautiful lyrics and good music. Absolutely. So It's a learning experience. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> Um, sweet. Yeah. I, I think that just about wraps up the interview. Thanks again for coming through. And, um, yeah, like, like we said, go see your shows, uh, listen to your music and yeah, thanks again for coming. Thank you.